Okay, hi. So today is May 12th, 2021. It's my 24th birthday, so I now I have to call myself um, mid-20s and not beginning of 20s. Kind of weird. I think I'm at a good place in my life. I'm finishing up my studies at the end of the year. I feel like I'm getting a good degree. I feel like I'm good at what I'm doing. Some career prospects. Yeah. And I'm doing this talk for myself, kind of for documentary purposes. And to some degree, because I'm in an interesting headspace at the moment, I think. So. Yeah, maybe someone else can get something from it. I took some notes, of course. So, to be honest, the, the primary feeling I'm currently having, which is causing me some distress, but some interested distress, I would say, is this feeling of not being sure if I'm having a mental breakthrough or mental breakdown. So it's something in between, but I feel like even though it's it's making me a little anxious because yeah, I don't think anyone wants to have a mental breakdown. I feel like the it actually is a mental breakthrough. So I'm actually processing things and understanding myself better. Primarily, I think because of the the quarantine and, and the pandemic. Because from the beginning on, I had a feeling that the pandemic was also kind of like a catalyst for like personal development, at least for me. So and, uh, I think I feel like this this time I had to spend alone, and I, I had to spend like in this unsure, not really clear what the future is situation forced me to, to develop myself more and, and forced me to, to move forward and it is good and I feel like this is the same I feel like this feeling I'm currently having is, is probably deeper than the stuff I had at the beginning of the pandemic but um, I think it's processing some important things yeah um, and I feel like yeah, I think this this dichotomy of, of feeling either having a mental breakdown or a mental breakthrough is now because every time you move forward you have to leave something behind. And I feel like to to maybe to build a higher building you have to first destroy something and get the materials to then use it to, to build a building again. I don't know if that's a great analogy. But yeah, but I feel like the, the primary realizations I had lately were that I personally have connected myself with and my identity primarily on accomplishments. So it always was like accomplishment done, next accomplishment, and and not really enjoying the process of something. But enjoying the, the accomplishment I made and then yeah, being done with it and then the next thing comes. And I feel like this this has prohibited me from enjoying things. So say um, doing a project, the only thing important was the goal, finishing the project and not like the process. And I feel feel like I mean it's 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 um, this old saying of, of not a destination is the important thing but the journey and I feel like only now I'm actually realizing it and understanding what this means or maybe not already understanding it but like I understand how you can be misguided and focusing on the destination and not on the journey and I feel like I've missed out on, on some amounts of um, enjoyment in life because I focus too much on the 
accomplishment instead of journey or uh, of the process, which got me somewhere. And I feel like this specifically um, made me um, be a person who does a lot of things for proof of concept. So what I mean with that is that a lot of interests I have and had were pursued in a way that I proved that I could do them because I was interested in them and I asked myself the question, could I, for example, edit a video? And could I maybe, and that is indeed the first video I, I made on this, this channel, um, could I make a video about a historical subject? And could I edit it? Could I, could I make a voiceover? and make it somewhat compelling. And I feel like I su succeeded in that. And um, in the time after that, after that, I was content with that. And, and I, didn't, I didn't jump to the next project because, well, I, I proved I could do that. And I proved uh, I was able to, um, to create something like that. And, well, I did it, so what do I have to do else? On to the next thing. And I feel like in the past few weeks I've run out of things to do. <laughs> as as weird as this sounds, I, I've run out of things to prove um, my conceptual ability to. And I feel like this, this initial moment realizing that was pretty scary. Because if you have nothing to do more in this world. What are you still doing? Not that I'm suicidal or something, but like it, it is a question of um, where to go next and if you have no idea where to go next, well, where do we go? <laughs> um, but since then, and it took a few weeks to realize that, that um, basically my approach was wrong <laughs> or my approach was bad. Um, that I did these, these things mainly, like I said, to prove that I could do them, not for actually doing them, um, which is closely related to doing things to accomplish them, not to do them and to enjoy the process of something and to experience it. Um, yeah, that that has changed. And, and while following up on that, I, I started to, to try and be, be more in the moment. I think this is this is the thing which people mean when they think I, I want to live more in the moment. Uh, to be in the moment, enjoy the moment, not um, have like an abstract goal to work to and um, aim for that and well the process then is pretty irrelevant and how you feel about the process um, when you achieve your goals. And I feel like at least my generation uh, and at least my upbringing in a Western country was focused a lot of accomplishments. I feel like, from what I've heard, Asia is, is similar in that degree, maybe even worse, that primarily accomplishments are valued and not really processes. Um, but yeah, I feel like to, to, feel, to live a fulfilling life, you can just go for accomplishments. Of course, accomplishments are something you can look back on to. Accomplishments are most times things you can show other people. <laughs> um, and accomplishments are something which, well, lead to success in some degree, be it artistic or in, in jobs. But if you only live for accomplishments, you, you probably run into the moving goalpost problem that you, after you've had one goal, you move the next goal 20 meters to the front, and when you reach that goal, another 20 meters, and and you never feel, you never feel actually satisfied with where you are. And I feel like if you mix in some degree of accomplish uh, of of experience, extra, uh, enjoyment, you can counteract that or something or enjoy both. So essentially enjoy both. Enjoy the process and enjoy the accomplishment. Yeah. Uh, 
And I feel like, and, and this is probably, it is related to that, but I feel like it's it's in a whole other box of Pandora things of me. Um, is that I took this concept of focusing on co accomplishing main things, focusing on proving that I could do things, um, to interpersonal relationships, primarily friendships, um, which is kind of weird <laughs> looking back on it. Um, I feel like this is also related to often moving as a child. So, um, essentially being used to making friendships for a certain period of time and then having an external factor breaking these, fr these friendships, if you move like I did for some distance, and being not able to, to keep up contact. And, um, I mean, still to this day, I'm, I'm pretty good at making friends and maintaining friendships on a somewhat casual level, but always relying on some external factor keeping me and my friends together, be it school, be it um, some other organizational thing. And as soon as this breaks away, I'm not really the person who, who starts reaching out to people and, and who starts inviting people to my life. Um, because I think I, I, I sadly learned that you sometimes have external factors breaking away friendships, or, or that's why your friendships end. So that you have an external factor breaking the friendships and then you make new friendships. So, I mean, whatever. Uh, and I feel like that's sad. It, it kind of sucks. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I feel like I, I can still exhibit them. Or, yeah, I can, I can still see that in my current life. Um, and with being sometimes almost pathologically not attached to things which sounds big and bad and it's not optimal, but I feel like um, I feel like that's that's to some degree a way how I exhibit commitment issues. So so I have I feel, I feel like I have commitment issues in the realm of friendships and I feel like I have commitment issues in the realm of creative endeavors. I mean, there are some things I just kind of stuck with, thankfully, <laughs> one being playing guitar, um, and the other being, for example, sport, or a certain type of sport I'm doing. Um, but It's kind of... I've, I've noticed how how easily I sometimes can think I can throw these things away. Like, well, whew, never was really committed. And that's... I don't like that. Let's be honest, I don't like that. I, I want to change that. And I want to be, I mean, in the end, I feel like it's a defense mechanism um, that by not getting committed to something, you keep yourself from being hurt, simply enough. If you don't get connected, you can break a connection. And yeah, I feel like for someone who's not religious, at least now not, <laughs> Maybe this will change in 10 years. And someone who, well, don't think that there's an afterlife, I of course hope there's an afterlife, would be nice, if it's good. Um, then it's, it's kind of, I feel like not the way to go in life. Because you only have so much time and you never really know when it might end. Um, 
So why not be brave and risk being hurt? I feel like this this is this is for someone like me who has a really rational approach to most things. Uh, something which is common. So doing weighing the risk and why weighing yeah what might happen and having all these scenarios in, in head in, in your head and, and thinking about what might happen and in the end getting so deep into possible scenarios and um, the fear of something not working out that you decide not to get attached simply. And I feel like with me getting older, um, like Penny Four is not old, <laughs> I know. But um, with me, let's say moving through time, moving through time, I'm realizing that it is worth it almost all the time. To take a chance and to to risk being hurt, to risk yeah, to to actually enjoy the time, and it's so weird that I I I just noticed that I I'm having a deja vu of me talking about this of of this exact moment, um, but whatever, yeah. I mean, it all is connected. Um, in the end, because in the end, making a friend is not the thing you are aiming for. Making a friend as the accomplishment it should not be the thing you are you are aiming for. It should be the experiences and, and the relationship um, you build with them, and that's a process, and that's that's the time and never has a clear end and it's never finished as long as you don't want it to finish um, and yeah I mean I, I've decided for myself a while ago to not really regret things because regret is not really logical because you can change the past um and and to this day I don't really feel regret because I, I somewhat treasure the experiences I made, ironically enough. Uh but yeah it is it is me really realizing that to be honest. Uh and I hope with this this feeling I'm having, which is always in between of mental breakdown, mental breakthrough, mental breakdown, mental breakthrough, um, and moving essentially somewhere in between, that I'm actually making a lot of progress, how I'm actually approaching life, not just intellectually understanding. What the, pro what the problem is, or, or what um, I'm not content with, but actually changing how I approach things and how I do things. Because in the end, that's, that's the thing which is important, because that actually changes my life, and this actually will make a difference. Um, and therefore, I'm, I'm accept accepting this temporary feeling which probably is in general just connected with the pandemic and um, feeling a certain degree of uncertainty uh, and losing this this prospect of a clear future, which of course wasn't really a case beforehand, but I think the pandemic has shown us how quickly something like this can fall apart. Um, but yeah, I feel like I feel like I, of course, can make a definite statement of that. 
but I feel like I wouldn't have personally progressed as much if there weren't a pandemic. And to some degree, of course, it would be better if there was no pandemic. Um, but for what it's worth, I feel like I've benefited from this situation, or I, I was able to benefit from this situation. Um, at least I hope I did. Uh, and I feel like this is another big step in approaching things differently, differently in my life. And um, yeah, actually, actually, well, in the end, enjoying life more. Um, because I'm more in tune with what I want in life and more, yeah, more content um, with I lead my day-to-day -day life. Both, I feel like, in this the, these realms of accomplishments and experiences. Because through actually experiences the process, through actually experiencing the process, I think I can learn more, which in itself is an accomplishment. So I, I have to be careful not to, to see accomplishments in experiencing the process, but just experiencing the process for itself and not connecting that with an accomplishment. But um, yeah, I think I will try. I will try my best. I feel like. There's something to gain, and like I said, the risk of not well, not confronting myself with this, with this um, thing I'm bothered about my own life, um, is way too high. Then just being uncomfortable and saying, "Well, there needs to change something," and, and there will be some change fundamentally in my person, and I feel like. And luckily that has been my experiences so far. So that when I confront myself with, with these things, I I come better out of it than I went into. So yeah, well, yeah, let's hope <laughs> that is the case now here. Yeah. I I yeah, I was I'm twenty four years old now. Let's see how it is in six months, a year, five years, ten years. It will certainly be interesting.